Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to a very special episode of the show. We've got in the house on the Zoom line, founding member of Queens, right? Michael Wilton, lead guitarist and lead vocalist Todd Latore. Welcome, Todd, once again. And Michael, welcome to the show for the very first time. How are you guys doing? Happy New Year. Well, thank you very much. We're doing good. Glad to thank hear you. It. Yeah, good to see you, Pete. 2022 is kind of like the year of Queensryche, man, right? I mean, uh, I, I want to say, first of all, uh, congrats on all the success with Digital Noise Alliance, your latest album, which made my number one album of 2022 and was very popular with so many people around the world this year. So, I mean, you know, you're now four albums into this current ever of the band. How happy are you guys with this album and kind of where things are at today as we're entering into the new year, 2023? Michael, I guess I'll uh, start with you here. It's great. It's solid. You know, it's uh, we keep growing and growing as great musicians and great friends. And, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic, this one was a great springboard to get this album out and do it, you know, and and we lucked out getting the Judas Priest tour in spring and then Judas Priest in fall. So it was just an amazing time and the band keeps growing and it's just such a solid lineup now and everybody is saying that to us so congrats and here's to a 2023 that's right todd how do you feel about kind of the trajectory of you know the four albums now and you within the band for 10 years at this point now a decade <laughs> decade is the front man yeah yeah you know michael and i were talking i don't know a couple of weeks ago and uh and the this year is the 10th anniversary of that first record that I did with them. I said, God damn, where'd the years go? 10 years already. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, I, I feel like, um, like it's been a progression for sure. Um, man, if I could take my favorite songs off of those four records, <laughs> I think there'd be just a masterpiece of an album there. Um, it's it's been a lot of fun for sure and uh you know it's interesting because some people have said oh i think this is the best one since that todd's done with the band and and i don't know that i personally feel that way because i like each of them for different reasons and um but you know if people feel that way and they see the band as still on this upward trajectory then man i can't complain about that it's certainly better than than the antithesis of that but you know we just write the songs and and we don't know what it's going to be like in the at the end right and uh and as long as people are receptive of it and they like it then that's that's reassuring that um that we're putting out quality work um because everything is just so subjective you just don't know but four records in the band is 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 doing really really well and the lineup is solid it's so solid and you know on and off the stage which is just crucial so yeah i mean we have just so many great things uh that we've been able to do like michael said coming out of the pandemic getting on two judas priest tours doing a ton of fly dates now embarking on our first headline tour for this record changing up the set list there's there's just a lot happening so it's it's certainly not stale. It's it's good. Yeah, I mean, you hit on something really cool there. I, I think you talked about how each album is really strong, but yet very different. And, and I picked up on that. And I, I've been following the band since that, Michael, since that debut EP came out all those years ago. I remember buying that when it first yeah. came out. So I've, I've seen the highs and the lows of the band. I've been there. And uh, I think all four of these records are really different from each other. Yet they have that feel that almost... I, I often say this and whether you agree or not, it's almost like if these would have all come after promised land, it's so seamless and the quality straight across the board, not that there wasn't good stuff in between, but it's almost like the band has been resurrected and you're creating music. That's just as fresh and vibrant as it was 35 years ago. 
So I think that's a good thing. So, I mean, to get back to some of the, the songs on the new album. So I, I always love to ask this question, you know, as uh, journalists and reviewers, we always tend to, you know, talk about our favorite songs on the album and why we like them and so on and so forth. And for me, I mean, some that stand out are Lost in Sorrow, Behind the Walls, Tormentum, In Extremis. I mean, they like really pop, but the whole album is really strong. Do you guys have any personal favorites on the album? I know it's it, the album is still kind of fresh and new, but any that you really resonate with? Forest. I don't know, you know, one of my yeah, favorites. yeah, I mean, but they're all, you know, we tried to get a good variety um, of music and it's, it's kind of hard, you know, each song grabs you in a different way and gives you a different feeling. So I can't say which is my favorite. I like them all, but you know, it depends on the day. It depends on my mood and depends, you know, what track hits me in the car when I turn the key on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, um, oh, hopefully you can hear me well. It says my internet connection is unstable. should be good. I'm plugged in Ethernet. But, yeah, you're um, good. No, you're going to look fine. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah. hear you. You know, sometimes I'm doing stuff around the house or I've been trying to organize and clean the garage and whatnot. And I'll, I rarely play our music, right? Because you're just, that's kind of what you do all the time and you want to listen to something else. But occasionally I'll put I'll put the new record on and I'll play through it. And every time Forrest starts, I'm always like, ah, I, you know, it just has this freshness about it and it's spacious. And I just love that song. And and because there's just such an abundance of, you know, there's a lot of the heavy stuff. And then you don't hear songs like Forrest much within this genre really and it's really sequenced nice on the album too where it comes in the album too okay it, well that's a good bit of break there yeah, yeah yeah um so that's 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 a standout one to me the chorus to lost in sorrow is is a really great chorus like them all you know but right out of the gate you know forest is just a standout one to me and maybe because it's it's so different than than everything else um hold on is another one of my favorites love that song love what casey did and you know what michael and casey created that music together and uh and then i came in with the, the vocal melodies and stuff but you know there's just some interesting drumming on there and and uh hmm. yeah so there's just that i guess forest is the first one that sticks out in my mind for this record for some reason cool yeah so, Michael, as like a founding member of the band and all the tours you guys have done over the years, right? So it's got to be interesting to create like set lists for live shows, whether it's opening or headlining. And I think like certain songs in the catalog will forever have to have a place in the set list, right? You know, Take Hold the Flame, Queen of the Reich, Walk in the Shadows, Eyes of a Stranger, Operation Mind Crime, Revolution Call, all that stuff, right? It's got to be there. You got to play those. Do you think like maybe like, I don't know, five years from now, there will be, and if you, if you think there are, which ones, certain tracks that you guys have recorded on these recent four albums that you have played live, do you think any of those will make it into the mandatory set list, again, in the, down the road a ways that people will come and expect to hear some of these songs that will be future Queens or classics? Do you, th do you have any of those yet that are kind of percolating or maybe that you're thinking of throwing out on the headline tour coming up? Any, any, any ideas on that front? Well, there's just such a wide palette of, you know, songs and, you know, how they react live. And um, I mean, and, you know, it's obviously we're promoting, you know, this album. And so we want to get those in. But uh, just on the Judas Priest tour, we started playing uh, Behind the Walls and In Extremis. And, you know, the, the crowd really reacted to them and okay. as if they were classics, you know. And um, so I think it's just a matter. I mean, we try and as much as we can keep a variety in the set list. We don't want people going, Oh, I'm not going to buy a ticket. They're just going to play the same thing again, you know? So it's a, it's a matter of, you know, keeping a di diversity in the set list and not always, you know, we got to mix it up. And, uh, but yes, I mean, there's so many staples, you know, there's eyes of a stranger, there's empire, you know, and, and, uh, but I think, I don't know. 
I'd have to say maybe uh, Behind the Walls. I, I think it's just such a strong song live. And I think that may be something that, that could be a standard, you know, and, uh, but, you know, time will tell. I know on this next tour, we're going to be really promoting a lot of songs from DNA and it's um, Forest is one of them. I hope that one becomes a mainstay. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a matter of connecting with the audience and reacting, seeing how they react. And, uh, you know, time will tell. Yeah, it's got to be tough for you guys. I mean, because I, I talk to people all the time about going to see, you know, older bands who have a rich catalog. And you get, on the one hand, you have the 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 fan who just wants to hear the big popular songs they know and love. They don't want to hear anything else. They're not into deep cuts. They're not into new stuff. And, and then you have people who I'm one of. It's great to hear the popular stuff, right? But I want to hear all those deep cuts. I want to hear the new stuff. So it's got to be, I mean, I know you guys want to play more of the newer things, but you 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 hit the nail on the head. You have to put a variety in the set that will appeal to everybody, right? And that, that's got to be tough, right? It's got to be tough. It's not easy. I yeah. will, I will, I will agree with you. It is not easy because, you know, we're playing, you know, three to five shows a week when we're on a tour and it's like, gosh, can we play a different song, you know? And it's like, yeah. so, but you're in a different city every night and they're expecting you to play that song. So yeah. it's it's a balance. And, um, you know, a lot of thought goes in our set lists and, and uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's a challenge, uh, you know, I mean, obviously we love the deep cuts, you know, and, you know, the old Reich fans just dig that. I mean, it's, intense when you see their faces in the crowd it's just amazing oh my god they're playing that song you yeah. know and then you know people are screaming you know for the new stuff and it, and it's and you know we're also getting a younger audience so it's like a lot of them you know pretty much know the new stuff and, and yeah they, they don't have that and, attachment and, yeah they don't have right that they go back and listen you know to the old stuff and it's like cool 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 you know and i see why this was a big you know whatever and but yeah, I mean, it's, and, you know, in this day and age, we're playing, you know, different lengths of time, you know, it's like, when we're headlining, it's, a, you know, a good 90 minutes solid, but when, when we're opening or playing festivals or doing anything else, you know, it could be 30 minutes to 70 minutes to 75 minutes, so it's, it's always, uh, you know, trying to get as, as much music as possible out there, you know, while, retaining you know a good energy in the show and connecting with the fans i mean yeah. as long as you're connecting with the fans well that's the important thing. that's the main thing you know yeah. we're not just up there doing it for ourselves so it's that's the important thing and if you know you're connecting with the fans then you're doing something good yeah and i think metal fans are a little bit more open-minded to that to going to see one of their favorite bands live knowing that they're going to hear some stuff that they may not know that well as opposed to like a lot of classic rock fans who they want to go see foreigner and journey like every summer and they just want to hear those same 12 songs every year that's it they don't want to hear anything else <clears throat> i think, I think are, are a little more open-minded i think also like what michael said you know when we do behind the walls that chorus is very simple but it's very chanty right people can it's simple um and and we were playing that to you know the judas priest crowd i mean we, there were certainly queens people there but it was their it was their house um and it's just like even if they don't those people don't know it yet by the time that second chorus comes around because it's so memorable and easy some people would start to i would kind of get them to do it right I think if you know that that, especially the, the Queensryche shows, our own shows, a lot of those are diehards that know what we're doing. When we play a casino or some other outside event with multiple bands, okay, maybe you don't have the hardcore ones as many there. But when we do our, our stuff, you know, they know this stuff. They know the news. A lot of them know the new stuff. And, you know, I think if that song like Behind the Walls or An Extremist or Forest or whatever does resonate i think you have to keep driving that shit live and that will make it become a stable class if you just play it on one tour it's forgotten it's forgotten 
you have to keep you have to be consistent and believe in what you're doing in my opinion and keep playing it because if you just throw it in for one run and then you take it out and they're like well they don't play that anymore it was only on that tour it's like well what what good is that so you have to i think there are certainly you know staple songs that we've done that could very well be just as vital and important um, to not just rest on those laurels. Yeah. And and you're right, there it's a weird thing. Some people only want to hear silent lucidity. Some people never want to hear it again. Right. And you're like, <laughs> what do we do? So you do have to be selective and careful. But you know, I'm very much looking forward to putting in a lot of the last decade of work. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, it's important. Sure. And uh, so we got a lot of, we got a totally good set list that we're, we're working on for this, uh, for this upcoming tour that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I, we say it here on the channel all the time and Michael knows better than anybody else. It's like songs like Walk in the Shadows and Eyes of a Stranger were once new too, right? To everybody. And they kept and playing they became them. They became classics because of playing them all the time live, right? I mean, that's just, that's the way it goes. Yeah. So just you know dropping a song from that seems to go over kind of well but you're like ah we'll move on to something else well then it's gone forever from the set right it's like yeah so yeah. you got just got to keep pushing it so very yeah. cool so the judas priest tour uh i know this was very exciting for you guys and i think uh i was so happy to see you get this tour because i think you know there you are in front of thousands and thousands of people every night i caught the the show in jersey last year at uh, in newark and man it seemed like there were thousands of queens right fans there and i everybody i talked to really loved your opening set and uh you guys are just so powerful and i think you, you picked a really good set it really resonated with the the jews priest fans who again most people were there to see them but then oh we get the added bonus of a queens right not some unknown band that they never heard of before that they don't know the material so how was it for you guys night after night after night i mean it was a fairly lengthy tour you know a couple couple legs of the tour here uh playing in front of all these people all over the place i mean i mean that must have been great for you well yeah it's uh i mean look judas priest was one of my influences when i was you know late teens early 20s so i was um, gravitated to the two guitar, you know, hard rock metal bands. You know, I was I was listening to these guys. You know, all their old albums and stuff. I I still have them. You know, the 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 LPs. And uh, for me, you know, it's it's since we've been able to tour with them, they're just really nice guys. They're um, uh, super easy to work with, and. And they bring it every night. They kick ass, you know. Rob has still got it, you know. And I just, for me, it's like, it's a good package. And I think it's a, uh, our music complements each other in some way. And, but, you know, for me, it's just like, yeah, I, I grew up listening <laughs> to these guys. And now I'm on tour with them. You know, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, and, uh <laughs> And and the thing is too is you know anything can happen right we we turn on the the news or the internet and somebody's passed away something tragic happened and you know to see a band that's been around as long as Judas Priest has to to be on a tour with them you're like how many more tours does it does anybody have you don't know yeah. so to to be able to to get two tours with them was really awesome and they changed the set up uh on both legs you know it was totally different and uh getting to know them and like like michael said you know you, you know we'll, we'll be going to our dressing room and and we'll hear them rehearsing in, a, in one of the little side rooms you know um scott has like a practice kit and they would all be you know in there and they'd be rehearsing a part to a song and we're like oh yeah and we'll be in our room kind of doing this you know and and it, it was a lot of fun so much respect for them and, and the organization treated us so well um it was a real treat and uh we're very honored that that they not only chose us one time but i think that they saw we we did deliver and and behind the scenes our crew you know there was a 10 minute changeover for us so we had to have everything off boom 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 and done and you know, adhering to that to that timeline, 
and and being professional and out of their way where we're a totally self-contained unit so we don't rely on them for a bunch of stuff i mean we have all our own everything and uh it was just a seamless thing and uh couldn't have asked for a sweeter situation for me you know look michael has toured with everybody ozzy and dio and maiden and you know i i didn't I don't have those experiences, but, you know, I did get to do some great tours with the Scorpions and now a couple great tours with Judas Priest and obviously, you know, festival stuff where I played with other bands. But but these actual tours were really great. And the timing couldn't have been better as well because of the new album. It was like we had a built in several thousand people a night, a lot of Queensryche shirts in the audience, good reaction on the songs. <laughs> You know, uh, man, very, very thankful to them. Well, that's a kind of rub you want. I mean, you know, back in the old days, uh, it was album tour, album tour, album tour. That's what you did. You put it out an album, you went out and toured it, and hopefully the sales picked up and, you know, took advantage of that. I mean, did you guys see a lot of rub as far as like, you know, excitement and sales of the album based on this tour? I would have to think so, right? I think so. Plus the videos that we did, you know, we, we've shot, how many, Michael, what do we do? Seven videos? Seven videos, yeah. So we still have two videos to put out. Um, and uh, you know what I do like, Pete? I do like, I, I know there's this idea, this philosophy of the album drops the day the tour starts. I'm personally not a big fan of that. I like it to simmer a little. And then when you come out to see it, you know this new stuff better. And right. it's right and so you you're engaged a little more so i'm a big fan of boy the record came out a month ago or what it you know four weeks five couple months whatever then go tour on it yeah. i think that that uh that just helps when you're doing the new stuff it's not so foreign to people you know you've got your singles of the videos that come out way ahead of time and usually those are something we'll play live i i'm ex i'm hopeful and and i kind of anticipate a much better uh, more engagement on some of the new stuff because it's been out prior to us touring on this record yeah yeah i mean the, we've heard the horror stories over the years of bands who have gone out and toured before the album even came out and they want to play four or five six songs from the new album and people are kind of like what is this stuff right because they haven't heard it yet so yeah i totally agree with you so i so now the, the priest tour is done the album's out you guys are getting ready to go on the road when does that start uh, who you guys bring along with you and you know, kind of what are your you already i'm sure you're already talking about the set list and how that's going to look and you know will you change it up periodically during the tour any ideas uh, so far yeah i mean we're starting the dna tour uh i believe it's march 3rd and that's uh, a six-week tour and uh yeah we're really excited you know, to, to get out there and, and uh, you mentioned set list. I think we're going to probably shake up the set list a little bit. And I think, you know, so for the hardcore Riker fans, I think it's going to be uh, pretty cool and diversive. Um, we have uh, Marty Friedman and trauma opening up for us. So that's, that's really exciting. I think it's going to be a, a good power packed show, you know, a good evening of solid, you know, good music. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's special for us because, you know, we get to get back out in the marketplace and do a headline tour and, you know, get it back to, you know, the way things used to be. I mean, and I think having, I think having, I mean, yeah, what you were going to say, Pete, having Marty, I, I believe he lives in Japan. Still. He does. <laughs> and so, you know, you know, I don't think the, the Marty Friedman sightings are, are scarce. So mm -hmm. I think people are are really going to dig seeing what he will bring. And then Trauma, you know, was for people that may not know, was the band that Cliff Burton was in before he joined Metallica. So there's kind of that little neat trivia part to it. Um, and then uh, our 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 friend Brian, Brian Allen, he used to sing in Vicious Rumors. And then he was in another band called Dark Sky Choir that did a tour with us um, in Europe. So he sings for them now. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be, I think it'll be great. You know, trauma's pretty heavy and, and, you know, the vocals are pretty aggressive. 
and then Marty, you know, whatever he's going to play, it's just going to be awesome. Right. Um, instead of having, you know, two or three bands that are just kind of all the same, you know, there's, there's, it's still under the umbrella, but you're getting something different each time. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, something different for people to experience. So hopefully, you know, people will come check out the tour and check out the new merchandise and, and that kind of thing and here. And, and the set list is, is going to be cool. I mean, um, we're finalizing a few things, but there's a couple deep cuts, Pete, that you're going to, you know, you're going to be stoked to hear. Okay. And, uh, and then a lot of, a lot of, uh, the last four records and then your staples, but it'll be, it'll be totally different from what we've kind of been doing for a while. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Look forward to. So, yeah. um, so I want to touch on something real quick. You guys have probably talked about this ad nauseum, but uh, I, since I have both of you here. So one of the challenges for someone like me is uh, I'm often having to sell people on new output by bands who have been around for a long time. Right. And especially bands who have had personnel changes. So, you know, many people in my age group, our age group, you know, you grew up on a band, you had a classic lineup that made the classic albums. And, you know, when there's lineup changes, you know, you get this whole no Lou Graham, no foreigner, right? Type of nonsense. Right. And that applies to being, you know, foreigner, Journey, Judas Priest, even Leonard Skinner, and even you guys, right? So how how tough has it been for you guys to battle this on you now and you know 10 years into this great comeback that you guys are doing where there's still people you know you don't want people to forget the contributions of you know Jeff and Chris and Kelly and Scott and Parker right but you know to simply give this lineup and its music a chance because you're still honoring the Queen's right legacy and the brand uh you know after a decade now does it does it ever get exhausting or do you just kind of say you know what they're either with us or they're not. We're going to continue doing what we're doing. How do you guys deal with that on a daily basis? That one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, you get people that are so passionate about the band. And, and like you said, in different time periods of our legacy. Yeah, I mean, that's that's super cool. But I mean, for us, you know, that that's all outside chatter. We're we're a solid entity. Um uh, not trying, you know, to, to copy anything, uh, from the past. And, and it's like, you know, it's, it's always been about the song for us. And I, I think if, if people can, can get off, you know, the labels in their head and, and just listen to the music and listen to the songs and listen to how it connects with you and how it moves you, you know, then support the band, you know, okay, maybe you're, favorite album was rage for order or empire or whatever you said i'm not going to listen to anything but that but you know what it's there's some really exciting music coming out of queens right right now so give it a chance yeah i figure it's their loss if they're not willing to give it a chance right like uh, someone made a comment to me i was talking about this recently somewhere on social media and i said this is one of their in my opinion one of their best ever albums and someone said best ever well have you ever heard and listed you know three of the 80s albums i'm like of course i have right doesn't mean this can't be as good doesn't but there's right. no we're not comparing them right it's just a great queen's right album and that's what that's all that matters it's a great queen's right album it's like why must we choose you know so many people want to do that it's either this or that right why can't it be all of it right yeah and like michael said it's it's it is about the songs. It's about the music. That's what it, that's all that it's about is the music, right? You have two founding members. When Michael writes something on guitar and he sends it to me, the first time he sent me anything, there was no vocals, no anything. I heard it and I go, God damn, that sounds like Queen's right. Of course it does, yeah. But, but I mean, <laughs> But there's a million guys that can go dig 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 dig. When Michael plays a chord and he phrases the way he phrases, it's very unorthodox and it's very unique. And he is that sound musically on the guitar. Okay, don't forget this guy wrote you know Empire music. He wrote some of the sickest Queensrÿche riffs and melodies you've ever heard. The guy right there. So. It, I mean, he is that sound. And the first time I heard that, I was like, 
wow, this this is really like instant. Well, that sounds like Queensryche. He sent me four songs when I when I when I met him and we spoke, and I heard another one. I went, wow, that sounds Queensryche too. Yes. How's this guy do this, right? And it's just what he sounds like. But at the end of the day, it is those songs, and we could easily say that you know a record like Dedicated to Chaos with more original members didn't sound as good as less original members because at the end of the day, it's about the songs. So yeah, if people can put their labels, like Michael said, and their biases aside and put that, just shelve it for a minute, listen to it on its own merit. And mm -hmm. then if you're honest with your, with yourself, nine times out of 10, you're going to say, that sounds like a strong Queensryche song to me. That's my opinion. And I'm able to step away from being in the band because I was out of the band my whole life until I was in my late thirties. So I, I can separate that. Yeah. Um, you know, we just want to write great songs. And after 10 years, people are still like, who's that singing? That's well, the new guy. I'm always going to be the new guy, right? You're always going to be the new guy. Always it makes me sound fresh, but <laughs> you know, but at some point you just say, Hey, you either dig it or you don't. And that's okay either way, because we're still going to do what we do. And, and we're able to play all around the world and earn a living and perform for people. And, and people are going to like it. Some people aren't. I like Coca-Cola over Pepsi. It doesn't mean Pepsi's awful. I just, my taste is, is that. Yeah. So no hard feelings to any, to anybody. And honestly, like, uh, it's a very small minority of people that, uh, you know, of all the the millions of people in the world, you know, the, the naysayers are just very small amount and you can't focus on that stuff. We yeah, don't. You can't. So. Yeah. Before I forget, uh, because she'll yell at me if I don't mention it, uh, you really made Lynn Versace's day when you dedicated Jet City Woman to her on stage in Pete's. Uh, just want to say she was she was through the moon for that. So she I, was I, so she was so cool and and fun. And I saw her when I was performing. I was like, I know you. I know you. I know who you are. <laughs> right. And then I spoke with her and she's got this like, you know, she's got her thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very sweet woman, very kind, very nice. And I remember hearing her say or something that jet city woman was like her all-time favorite song so yeah. when i knew that was her and that song the light bulb went off in my head and i had to say that that was for her but yeah well shout out to to her so. yeah so lynn there you go <laughs> michael i can't let you go we have a lot of gearheads who watch the channel right so i can't let you go without talking about kind of what what guitars and equipment are you playing these days uh anything new that you've come into contact with that you want to talk about uh stuff that you used on the album so on and so forth well, guitar wise, I'm still playing my tried and true uh, ESP uh, skull guitars. Um, I've been playing those for, you know, quite a few decades and they're just, you know, dependable guitars. And, and I, I've just used, I use them on recordings as well as live, um, you know, and uh, um, touring wise, I, I use um, uh, a Kemper uh, profiler as my amp um it it uh profiles all the amps you know that that i own which um i did with uh our producer zeus um you know he uh helped me do that to get all my amps into my profiles so um i know that's really techy stuff <laughs> but uh you know it's it's, um, you know, it's pretty simple, you know, it's just that. And, uh, you know, we have the same type of wireless systems and, and uh, um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm using the same strings, <laughs> same picks, same guitars. Um, I find you know, a lot of musicians I'm talking to lately are saying that they're like, I, you know, I remember back like years ago, you had a lot of guitar players and, you know, bassists and drummers and keyboard players who they were constantly trying new things. They go out and tour and they bring like, you know, 10 different guitars. They got to have, I mean, I, you know, Joe Bonamassa comes to mind. He's got a different guitar for every song. But the more and more I'm talking to guys of late and it's like, yeah, I kind of go with what works for me. And it's like, and I don't need anything else. And that's OK, too. Right. Yeah. yeah, I th I think that's what's important, you know, and it's it, 
um, if it sounds good to me and, and it's working, you know, um, with the band and our sound man, you know, it's, it's, it's a no brainer. So they both, they'll fix yeah. It. Yep. yeah, it's just the, you know, it's, it's those ESP guitars are, are great touring guitars. And I, you know, that's the sound it's, uh, um, you know, something that, that, gosh, I mean, I don't know how many years it's been, maybe 25 or so I've been with them or 30 yep. and, you know, I love them. So it's all but, uh, whatever works yeah. for you. So in closing, uh, everybody, if you haven't heard Digital Noise Alliance, you need to. It's available now. Century Media Records. Uh, guys, you've been pretty good over the last decade or so. Every kind of two, maybe three years, a new album coming out. So you're going to go out and play live. You're going to start. I mean, I know this just came out, but uh, could we maybe in 2024 look for a new Queen's Rec album, perhaps? I think Nobody 20, knows. 24 sounds a little soon, but yeah. I, 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 would, I was going to say 25, but I was like, yeah. but it's not, but it's not, uh, you know, sometimes songs just start to write themselves. You never know, you know, uh, you start to come up with an idea and boom, boom, boom. Next thing you're near, like, wow, that was kind of effortless, right? Some of the best stuff was written pretty quickly. Um, it would be great to have one you know, in the can and ready to track, you know, by, by uh, mid next year, I think would be, would be phenomenal. And who knows, maybe a late, maybe a late 2024, who knows? I mean, we're just at the beginning of this year, so it's, it's wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for sure, but I still think the best one is yet to be written. And so I, I don't want to rush it, but I don't want to sit around either. You know, we talk it's about the expectations, Todd. That's good. That's, that's good. you have to. I I I personally feel like, you know, these are great records, and I I I'm proud of them, and I really like them. To me, it's the one hasn't been written yet, and and we can totally do it. Like it's the it's there. We all have it within us to to do this together. So I'm optimistic and hopeful and and excited to, because when you when you're writing for all this time. And then you record and then you rehearse and you're like, fuck, I've heard this song. And I say to the guys, how do you still play Jet City Woman? Doesn't it drive you insane? Because, you know, it's just like, I'm so sick of this song. Like, I've heard it so much, right? You're excited to start creating new stuff. Yeah. So we're already talking about, you know, and we should get together, you know, on some downtime and start coming up with some more cool stuff. And let's let's get ahead of the ahead of it, you know, so. Cool. Yeah. Well, best of luck on the journey, guys. And uh, if you uh, care to go see Queens right out on the road, headlining tour starts in just a few weeks, beginning of March. So go check them out. In the meantime, you got four great albums here and all the classics that are available to go listen to. And I want to thank both uh, Michael and Todd for joining us here today on See Your Tranquility. Very pleasant chatting with you both, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again soon. And we got more news to talk about in the Queens Right Camp. So uh, everybody, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. From Michael Wilton and Todd Latore, I am Pete Pardo. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank you.